Joining us now in the MMA Fight Corner, Pat Bam Bam Healy, UFC lightweight, who's fighting George Masvidal at UFC on Fox 11. That's coming up on April 19th. Pat, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you, Heidi, for having me on the show. Absolutely, man. So you've got an awesome fight here, something that I think fight fans may have been looking forward to for quite a while, because this was actually supposed to go down in strike force, but it didn't end up happening. We saw you fight Kurt Hollibaugh instead. So how do you feel about finally getting this match up with George? Oh, I'm totally cool with it. I think it's a, a great fight um, for both of us, for the crowd, and uh, you know, I think it'll make for a good fight. And, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I think he's wanted to fight me for a while. He kind of called me out once in strike force, and then uh, we were supposed to that fight that time uh, um, and when he got injured. So I really like when a, a guy thinks he can beat me, and I, I look forward to going in there and, and proving him wrong. And no less, you're going into his hometown in Florida. He trains down there with American Top Team, and he's from Miami. So uh, you're going to be in hostile ground. Does that ever bother you as a fighter, going into hostile territory? No. Um, to be honest, I like it, like, one way or the other. Like, either, like, my my hometown or, or, or good territory for me or good territory for my opponent. I like to feed off the crowd, I think. Um, their energy, uh, when it's high is, is the best, you know, makes for the best type of fight. And, uh, you know, even if they're booing against you, like you can still feed off their energy and, you know, their, uh, excitement. Absolutely. And coming into this fight, you know, you came into the UFC off of a six and one record in strike force. You had that win overturned against Jim Miller. And then, you know, you've had a couple setbacks since then. So do you feel like heading into this that you really have like your back up against the wall or that you really need to make a statement? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, 2013 was uh, not a very good year for me, you know. Um, so I look forward to getting back on the winning track and kind of erasing my last couple of performances from people's mind and, uh, you know, getting back into that talk, talk of uh, being around the top ten. Uh, Pat, Phil Devine here. Uh, one of the things a lot of fighters say is that they always learn something from a loss. Uh, what did you take away out of your last two fights? You know, I've uh, really been working hard on all my skills, and I think, like, focusing so much on um, the things I needed to work on, I got a little bit too far away from the things I do well. So that's one thing I've, I've really focused on for this fight is going back you know, really wrestling a lot, like getting grappling a lot, like doing the things that I do well and trying to build on them and not necessarily looking at, you know, the, the work I've been putting on my striking to, to win the fight. I think I use that to set up what I do best. And now you talk about going back to your roots. Tell us about your roots. Bring us back to what brought you into this sport and brought you to where you are today. Um. Actually, you know, I got into the sport when I was like about 14 or 15. Uh, we had a, a friend up the street. You know, I have a twin brother. My twin brother, Ryan, and I uh, met a guy who was into the UFC, you know, and had them all on, on VHS, and we started watching it. So I'd always really been into fighting and, and the UFC, and, you know, I kind of started wrestling because of that. And, you know, I got a real good base in wrestling, and, and spending years at Team Quest, that was, uh, you know, their real strength. So I was able to build on that a lot. And, you know, it kind of really found, I thought, at that time, my winning style, what I needed to do to win in a fight. And, uh, you know, I think in my last two fights, I got, I got too far away from that. And, you know, that's kind of what I'm looking to get back to. Well, you brought up your brother, and we've actually quite a few times had two brothers on the show at the same time talking about how they train together and the the what they've taught each other. What about you and your brother? What's the relationship like and how well you guys work together? Uh, man, we work great together. I mean, my brother's still my best friend. Uh, he lives about an hour, hour and 15 minutes away from me now. So we only train once or twice a week together. Um, but I think we both, you know, we, we used to be really competitive and like we couldn't spar together cause we just, it just turned into just a sloppy slugfest. But now we've kind of found, uh, 
you know, our comfortability with each other and, and we don't really have that ego thing where we got to beat each other up anymore. Um, so really like when one of us has got to fight, the other one's there to just support them, help them do whatever they want, you know, be their kind of dummy. So I, I, we work really well together and, you know, my brother's always a big part of uh, my training. And and ahead of fighting, George, have you actually brought in anybody uh, like a specialist or anybody different than you would normally work with to really kind of push the pace? Um, I haven't brought in anybody really. Um, I have been working with more, you know, I know kind of his style. Well, I think, uh, you know, he's going to try to counter and, and move and, um, you know, kind of try to keep the fight standing. So I have you know, brought in guys locally who do that well in the area, you know, and I think that's going to be, um, you know, help a lot, you know, getting that look that I think he's going to give me. We were talking a little bit about how you got started in this sport and the strike force background that you had, but, you know, I've come to realize that this is going to be your 50th fight just overall in your MMA career. Um, to me, that blows my mind a little bit, just how many fights you've been in, how many scraps, you know, and uh, just from where you started, I believe it was what, almost over t- what 12 years ago, just about. So uh, where do you feel you are right now in your career? You know, I, I know that's a lot of fights and, you know, it may look like I'm getting towards the end of my career, but I'm I'm only 30, and I still feel, I'm, I'm feeling the best I've ever felt. I still feel good every morning when I wake up. I don't feel like an old man or anything. So, <laughs> um, I, I feel like, uh, you know, I'm just starting to hit my peak. I think being the type of athlete I am, I'm not, you know, really quick. I'm not really explosive. I'm, you know, just kind of a grinder. I think, you know, guys like that tend to hit their peak a little later in their career and I think you know this is kind of just entering into my uh my prime here well that's great to hear because we've seen so many great fights from you uh so many entertaining fights and not only that it's I mean you've been in there with the best of the best since the beginning I mean you've got submission wins over guys like Carlos Condit a guy who very rarely gets submitted or hell rarely gets beat when you look back at your career and I know this is a tough question with so many fights, but is there ever one that sticks out in your mind? You know, you're laying in bed at night and you think back and you're like, man, I was on fire that night. You know, I think, uh, you know, Jim Miller was definitely one, even though I, you know, was turned over, but you know, that certainly was a very, uh, big moment for me, you know, kind of my first time back in the UFC in, in years and, you know, it was a, a huge stage and, you know, the crowd was going crazy there for him. And, uh, that was really big, but also that Carlos Condit, because that was, um, that was like one of those first moments where I was like, okay, like I can, I can make it, you know, to the top in this. And, you know, that was just an absolute war of a fight, just back and forth and back. And I remember when I did finally catch that choke in the third round, I was so exhausted when I stood up. Like, I all felt like I was about to pass out. Um, so, you know, anytime you can just leave it all out there in the, 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 the octagon, it's a, it's a great feeling when you get the victory. Now, you brought up the sparring with your brother in the past and how hard you guys would go. And, you know, one of the things that have come up lately, especially after the Johnny Hendricks win the, uh, last weekend, a lot of fighters were talking about the fact that, like, Hendricks doesn't like to spar full-on hardcore. He likes to take it easy when he spars. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think uh, not sparring as crazy as most guys used to do? I mean, there was talk of Pat Millich sparring days, you know, with that Team Extreme. Things were really rough. Do you think that not sparring as hard will help a fighter with his longevity? Yeah, I do think so. I mean, I think you got to find a fine balance. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, a lot at our gym, we, you know, we, we do big gloves, like boxing, 16 ounce gloves, sparring, and, uh, you know, the little tr- MMA training gloves, um, sparring, which are like seven ounce. Um, so I think, uh, when you got the bigger gloves, you can, you know, you try to, you know, sink those punches a little bit more, but when you're, uh, got the little gloves on, you, you could, you hold back a little bit. And I think, um, you know, a lot of the stuff is timing and, and being comfortable in there. 
And I think when you, you do the lighter sparring, you know, and you can see shots coming at you and, and not panic that you're going to get knocked out or something, I think that can really help, um, you know, your comfortability and, and your movement in there. So I think there's, um, you know, a real big advantage to, to turning, turning back the dial a little bit and not sparring as hard. But I do think every, you know, maybe once a week, you know, you can, can turn it up, uh, and, and get some, and some tough sparring. Well, Pat, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this interview today, but we really are looking forward to you mixing it up here with George Masvidal at UFC on Fox 11. Again, that's coming up on April 19th in Orlando, Florida. And uh, Pat, we appreciate your time so very much. Thank you. Hey, thank you guys a lot for having me on the show. I really appreciate it.